Hey, as I've told you in my last couple of videos, I taught myself how to paint at the end of college and I wouldn't have a class until two to three years later. So that means I made a lot of mistakes. And as I'm thinking of how to teach you how to paint, um, I thought, why don't I tell you all the dumb mistakes I've made so you don't make them? For whatever reason, at the time that I started painting, I didn't really look any online resources so many of these mistakes that I did they're just really small things that I could have easily avoided if I had guidance and I really don't remember why I didn't look up anything online at the time I just spent most of my time watching Jenna Marble videos so I'm sure they were out there all over the internet if I would have really searched for them but thankfully you're smarter than me and are looking up resources as you learn how to paint Number one is buying expensive supplies. Why is this a mistake? Because unless you're actually an uh, intermediate to advanced painter or artist, you're not really sure what medium you even like. You could start out using acrylics, see that it takes you a very long time to make a painting, and you might decide you want, you want to move on to oil painting, or maybe you like the more watery look and you want to do watercolor. If you go on and buy the biggest, most expensive supplies that you can get, you're going to either have to store them somewhere or throw them away eventually. For me, this mistake happened with this huge ass tub of paint. Number one, I hate the color yellow. I only use it for mixing. It's very rare that I actually use yellow on my paintings. But here I am stuck with this huge ass tub of paint because of course I don't want to throw it away and waste my money. And it's still good paint, so I want to use it. But I don't enjoy using it, probably the reason why I haven't used a lot of it in three years. So that's why I recommend that you don't get the biggest or most expensive set of supplies that you can unless money is no object. But if you're a beginner, you're most likely gonna change your mind, try new things. You may or may not end up liking the first brand that you buy. So I would say don't invest all your money on huge ass supplies or expensive supplies because those are not necessarily the ones you're gonna like. The other way in which this mistake kind of happened to me was that I totally ignored something like canvas panels which I talked about in my last video. They're canvas in the front but they're flat and they're a lot cheaper than canvases and when you're a beginner a lot of your paintings are not the nicest ones so you could just start out with painting the uh, canvas panels instead of spending all your money on canvases. Spending, especially if you're short on money, you can buy a pack of canvas panels for probably the same price that you will get one or two canvases. And of course you're getting more and you're still getting the experience of painting on a canvas surface. Another dumb mistake that I made was not using gesso. What is gesso? I have no idea, but all the websites will tell you that it's going to prep and um, make sure that there's something for the acrylic paint to bind to. If you go, um, if you're painting on a canvas or a canvas panel or even something like wood or linen. If you put the paint straight on the like fabric, I showed you in my last video, it's just going to sit there. The fabric is going to soak all your paint that you gotta use even more paint it's very difficult to move around the paint around your canvas so let's just avoid all of that and just put a layer of gesso make sure you let it dry somewhere where you're not breathing it you don't want to breathe this you know chemicals um, make sure you wash it right off your skin if you happen to get some on your hands um, yeah number two use gesso my third mistake, and probably the dumbest of all, was not mixing colors. When I started out, I used to buy like the sets that had like 8 to 10 different colors in one set. And for some reason, like, it never occurred to me that I could mix colors. Even if I had like not the best quality of paint, I could have probably like, you know, changed up the colors a little bit. And let me show you the difference. This is one of the paintings I've made when I first started learning how to paint. And there is some mixing of color, but I didn't do it intentionally enough that I made a pink. It's just kind of, just kind of looks like, I don't even know what it looks like. It looks ugly, <laughs> but it's like, 
if I don't know why I just I didn't think about that like I said it's just a dumb mistake that I made because I didn't have guidance I didn't look for any tutorials I was just kind of feeling things out and seeing how paint moved on the paper which colors I liked which all that is okay but a lot of my paintings would have come would have looked a lot nicer if I would have just mixed colors together um, because you know the setup pack of colors that you get it's it's only like eight colors let's look for example to one more more recent paintings and of course by the time I make this painting I have like three more years of experience but in one piece of paper this is still paper I have so many pinks for example I have this pink this pink this pink in the back there's a purple like I have so many types of pink going on that it just looks so much nicer and it looks a lot more um, like the next level and I actually like this painting and that's why I kept it I think it's still cool but if I would have used a lot more colors or if I would have just you know actually mixed purposely the white and the red to make pink it would have been such a nicer painting I would have more colors more more um, things for the eye to enjoy I feel like and for me that's what separates this from this of course other than my three years of experience by this point but yeah advice number three mix your colors or just play around with the ones that you got in your pack is what I mean mistake number four is using too few colors so this is like a similar thing to my last comment but for me it happened at a different set of time when I started finally taking classes at the community college like three years into painting my professor uh, actually recommended that all the time that we mix our own colors rather than putting them straight from the tube which is very good advice but what started happening is I kind of fell in love with purple and with teal and literally every single day and every single painting that I would try to make would just be purple and teal purple and teal purple and teal and I kind of got stuck on those colors and I still use a lot of purple and teal in my paintings because I love those colors but like come on there are way many other <laughs> colors that I could have used for example I didn't use pink for a very long time because I was trying to be like you know I used to hate pink I was trying to be like all rebellious because it's the quintessential girly color but so many more of my paintings could have looked better if I would have just opened up my eyes to other colors you know so try not to get stuck on on a very few colors when you find those that you like mistake number five was not using gel mediums like I recommended in my last video I thought that if I just grabbed a whole bunch of paint and I put it in the shape of a you know peak it would just dry like that and of course I would come back to my painting and it would be deflated you need gel mediums for that you need something that makes your painting thick and there's different levels of how you know how hard of a, a consistency you want but you definitely need gel mediums if you want texture but of course you don't need gel mediums if you're, you're just starting out and all of this is way too overwhelming or you just simply don't even want to get a gel medium it's not necessary it's just about adjusting your expectations you're not gonna have a lot of texture if you don't use gel mediums which is fine but you know you can save a whole lot of paint if you already know that of course number six and this is my biggest most dumb mistake of all and I just literally realized why I was making this mistake last week <laughs> it was not cleaning my brushes properly every single time that I've Number one, I want to say, I always attempted to clean my brushes. And every single time that the instructor at the community college would tell us, make sure you clean your brushes, make sure you're cleaning your brushes, guys. Like, I wouldn't even pay attention because I always clean my brushes. Or so I thought. <laughs> and I only realized I was making this mistake because I got all excited about making my YouTube videos. I went to the art supply store and I got a few couple of new brushes and it looks you know so super white and soft and I walked over to where I had my brushes and they were all disgusting and like stained with my old paint 
This isn't even one of the worst ones, but you can see the color is still on my on the bristles. And that's when I finally started searching online like why are my why is my painting not coming off my brushes? And I realized I've been making a big mistake. I've been doing well in you know I'm, I'm painting and then I set my brushes in the full of water. But where I made the mistake is that I thought that in putting the brushes with the paint in the water cup like that was enough the the paint is just gonna dissolve and <laughs> this is why the beginner mistake is just so dumb that's not the water yes yes acrylic paint is water soluble but you still need to just agitate the brush in the water cup you need to move it around and that's something that i just didn't do i would just let it sit in the water cup for hours like if my class would last it three to four hours that's how long a brush could be sitting there with paint and soaking up all the paint because i didn't do the one extra step of like and then of course at the end of your painting session you want to use soap to clean up all your brushes i got this pink soap from the art supply store up to this point i've been using the master's brush cleaner and preserver but what it's happened to me is like i always use this brush and it's like i have a hard time filling up all putting all the bristles inside and so i went ahead and got the pink soap which a lot of people have recommended and of course i went and tried to clean all my old brushes and of, of course you can see a lot of the stains still and they don't look as nice and i can feel like it feels rougher because i i try to scrape it so much with a um various other supplies to try to get the paint to get off the brush that it'd be a much easier job if you just start taking care of them from the beginning so make sure you clean your brushes properly if you start to see a lot of stains go back into the method where are you failing in the steps and then just coincidentally i had to charge my car on the day of christmas and i went to a marshall's because that's where there's like a free charger <laughs> by where i live and what I found was this huge cup, which like even my huge ass brushes fit and there's still room for more brushes. So I'm gonna start using this because I can kind of swirl it around. And then also coincidentally, I found this weird thing, which is um, supposed to be made for a makeup brush cleaning set. And it was only like, it was $4.99, which is why I bought it. Because every time I try to wash my brushes, I end up kind of rubbing it in my hand. And I was, when I was doing all this research for how to clean your brushes, everyone actually said do not <laughs> clean the brushes on your hand because you're getting all the chemicals in your hand. It's going to get into your bloodstream if you're doing it for a long time. Some paintings are more toxic than others. So don't do it on your bare hand, but you can do it um, on like a Tupperware container or if you find something like this, you can also just put, you know, put the pink soap on it and scrape it, swirl it around, and I don't know if you can tell, there's like textures at the bottom of this. And we'll see how it goes, like I said, it's supposed to be for a makeup brush, but I think it should all just work just fine. Mistake number seven. For me, mistake number seven was kind of unavoidable because what happened is a coworker asked me to um, make a painting for his office and he wanted a big painting of like 30 by 30 inches and i was like hell yeah i'll make that for you like of course i'm not gonna give up the opportunity but of course never in my life had i ever painted anything anywhere close to 36 by 36 probably up to that point i was still painting on like 8 by 12 paper and so the mistake here is moving way too fast in terms of size not only did I have a really hard time making that 30 by 30 painting because it was one of my very first, it was, I think that was my very first time painting on a canvas. I didn't have a style at the time. I didn't know how to communicate my thoughts. And not only do I have, you know, all those things not helping me, but now I got to fill this huge ass canvas that this person's paying me for. So if you can avoid that mistake, <laughs> don't get a huge canvas right away you know take your time learning how to paint in a small canvas maybe 
roll to a bigger canvas or paper and then a bigger and then a bigger and then a bigger. Unfortunately for me, right after that, someone else from work wanted to buy another painting and I went even bigger. <laughs> and I got a 30 by 60 paint uh, canvas, I mean. And at the end of both of those paintings, um, I ended up liking what I, you know, what I finished with. But it was such a struggle because I never painted anything anywhere close to those sizes. So it was very frustrating and looking back on those, they're not my best work. They're one of my first few paintings. So um, I feel very critical about those choices, uh, all the choices that I made for those two paintings. So my advice here would be to go to increase in size little by little and um, don't buy huge as canvases. Mistake number eight, right after the not cleaning my brushes properly, not having a sketchbook was the worst mistake that I've been making up until a week ago. And why didn't I think of a sketchbook? I don't know. Nobody really brought it up to me. Like I said, I wasn't going around looking up many online, um, looking for many online tutorials or resources for whatever reason until very recently. And a sketchbook is actually a great idea. It allows you to be a little bit more experimental and keep all your ideas, experiments, studies, whatever you want to call it, keep track of them. You can look back on them. Like that, if I would have had like five years of experiments recorded back, that would be so awesome to reference, you know, uh, all the time and even just to look back on my progression and just the fact that I didn't have a sketchbook, I didn't allow myself to experiment a lot. All my experiments were like me trying to like finish a painting and that's a lot, of, a lot of frustration that I could have avoided. I could have seen if some techniques actually look good together before I ever put it on canvas. I never really knew what my brushes looked like. Um, of course I knew what my brushes looked like but I didn't know what their effect um, and brush stroke how they compared to one another which is kind of really dumb <laughs> I could have done this a very long time ago but I didn't and yeah that's really all the new painting mistakes I have for you thank you for watching if you still are remember to subscribe if you like to continue talking about world domination and painting and Thank you to all you guys that have been uh, commenting and following us. Thank you to user Phonological who inspired this video. I was actually very afraid to make this video because it's more of a technical video and I feel like I'm not a technician when it comes to painting because I just don't really know a lot of like, because I was never taught like how to paint, I feel like I don't know, I don't have a lot of fancy words or terminology. I just like to play with colors, so whereas in, for example, if you ask me about dance or kickboxing, I'm very technical, I know exactly the way I'm supposed to do it and I can replicate it, but I don't have that confidence when it comes to painting. Anyway, what I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, don't be afraid to just play with color and have fun and hopefully th these mistakes that I made can help you make better choices as you go on your journey of learning how to paint and merry christmas i hope you're having a good holiday and um by the time this video comes up it will probably be around new year so have a happy new year thank you see you in the next video